Ooh, that was that was a uh, Se- sexy. Yeah, that, 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 that that made me feel funny in all of the wrong ways. Or <laughs> scintillating. <laughs> hey, welcome out to Third World Linux, episode fifty. Definitely not the most scintillating episode. My name is Ag. I'm Zhao, and I hear an Something alarm. Something is clicking. <laughs> Where? I don't know. It, it, it sounded like uh, there was like a beeping noise. Not sure what it was. Um. Either way. Not sure what it was. Was it our house alarm? Wait, I have to check. Was it our house <laughs> alarm? <laughs> so, while Ag is checking his house alarm, I'm going to be talking. And if I forget to edit this out, I'm really sorry. Hello. Uh, not our house alarm. And through the magic of <sighs> editing, people won't know that there was like a little 20 second, 30 second break in the beginning of the episode. Yeah. Uh, so what are we going to be doing this episode? Uh, up to you. All right. <laughs> Actually, we got some listener feedback, so listener feedback, and... Um, listener feedback. And, listener feedback it is. Uh, some, like, of the headlines in the Linux news that's been populating my feed. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, It'll be interesting. Let's give it a go. All right. So, uh, we, we, we got uh, a little bit of feedback from... Have we introduced ourselves? Yeah, we I have think introduced we have. ourselves. Anyway, I'm Joe. Uh, my name's AG. All right. And uh, we're doing third world things in... Uh, First world, no. Um, we're doing third world <laughs> things in a Linux world. Yeah. Wait, no, what? we're doing <laughs> Linux world, Linux things in a third world. There you go. <laughs> I actually really like that Linux things in the third world. Huh? There's another alarm. Is it? I. Jesus Christ! It's. I don't know. Crack it. I, it could be a. Thing. If I die right now, fine. Or if they steal whatever, fuck it. Let them have it. <laughs> Anyway, our first uh, bit of listener feedback is from Megamus Maximus, probably not his real name. And uh, what was it? Like last episode, two weeks ago, when we did the whole off-tangent thing, uh, one of us mentioned that Advanced Warfare doesn't have LAN. Um, apparently, <laughs> apparently it does. <laughs> right, this guy, like, he uh, linked us to a Q&A, or uh, Frequently Asked Questions. And apparently there is a LAN slash system link. So uh, we stand corrected and um, should totally play this game now. <laughs> because LAN! <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm the one who said that there wasn't any LAN. But there's LAN, and that's cool. All right, and uh, next up, I, I can't pronounce your name, dude, uh, sir, dude. I can't pronounce your name. I'm really sorry. Um, he says, greetings from the first world. Like, oh, cheers. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says, nice podcast, dudes. Thank you for that. Thank uh, you, have you, dudes. Yeah, have you all seen Edward Snowden? Uh, have you all seen the Edward Snowden interview with John Oliver about passwords? Uh, I wish I can see it, but you know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there were two interviews, right? Like one of, or there was. Yeah, he went to Russia, and there was that whole. Yeah, the, uh, that uh, one I was. Fam- I am familiar with um, the one where he went to Russia. Yeah. Um. In, in that same. Because uh, the closed door interview. Yeah. In that same time span, I'm assuming. Yeah. In, in that same session, uh, there was like a, like three four minute segment about like strong passwords. Like, what's a good password? And uh, Snowden said that we should stop thinking about passwords and start thinking about passphrases, which, um, which, which harkens back to that XKCD uh, comic, the, the, the XKCD comic strip that says that um, you know you have these really weird passwords with capital letters, small letters, numbers, and punctuation marks and stuff. Which is easier to guess, uh, which, uh, which a computer, um, will have an easier time guessing than a correct horse battery staple. So if you put like four random common words together, the difficulty to guess is harder and it's easier to remember for a human being. In other words, what? um, yeah, w- w- uh, it's easy, I th- it's easier to guess, uh, random numbers by a computer than a string of Random letters, right? Then, uh, then, then four the random words put together. Oh. So, uh, what was it? The 
the example that they have I'll probably link this I'll probably link the the, the strip but like yeah. there is a an uncommon base word and like you substitute small letters and big letters and instead of an O you put a zero instead of an F you put a four and that kind of thing like apparently that's easier for a computer to guess than just four random words and the example they use is correct horse battery staple like um because these are uh because the, because the computer doesn't make any distinction between like a zero and an e right mhm and so like it's you know the, the the more characters you have in your password the better um and if you don't have any like yeah yeah and correct horse battery yeah, staple mean, as one big word doesn't exist in any dictionary. So, you know. And I don't think the computer recognizes words because it deciphers letters one by one. Something like that. But then there is, I don't know, but then there is like this, th- there was uh, a way to crack passwords uh, a couple of years ago that took into consideration grammar. So, like, if they found... Um, grammar that it took into consideration grammar when you're thinking of your passphrases, but uh, it's still harder for a computer to guess, I guess. And um, four random words easier to remember for humans, and harder for a pa- uh, harder for a computer to guess. That that's sort of the idea. And Edward Snowden pretty much said the same thing. So uh, there, XKCD was the OG. Yeah, like uh, one of my favorite XKCAD moments was that they predicted that there will be a time when Twitter will be faster than an earthquake. Huh. And it did happen for um, a San Francisco earthquake. No, not a San Francisco earthquake. Like one of the mini quakes in San Francisco that happens hmm. or in California. And that indeed happened. And the one in Haiti, I think that also happened. Like Twitter was faster than the earthquake. Oh, well, yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that that makes sense. Mm, so that's um so that's XKCD and that's uh, uh, Edward Snowden and yeah that, that's what I I was able to connect the two. Um yeah and cheers uh, to the dude who sent it to us. Yeah, and um quick shout out to the good people over at uh, what was the name of that? It's like a small startup here in Cebu, and a bunch of them are arch users. And there was supposed to be a oh, shout. Nice. Um, uh, care sharing. Shout out to the people at Care Sharing and um, the person that asked me to give you guys a shout out uh, wanted me to say arch. Or it's supposed to be arch. like whispery and sultry. So going back to the beginning of the episode, right? Arch. 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 For the win. You should get a girl to say that <laughs> and have that on loop as the closing. Like instead of the usual song, I'll, I'll, I'll tell Julian. Julian, could just record this to this 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 word for me. Just say it most sexiest voice, not in the Star World type. Because yeah, like just say, I beat Resorts World Manila girl like that. Should um actually that, that sounds like a really cool project, dude. Like we get a bunch of different huh. girls just to say arch, and arch. like put them together somehow. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then in your manliest voice, say <laughs> Fedora, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and um speaking of Arch, so now we're gonna get into the news. Ah. Oh, right. Um Segway. Segway game on point. <laughs> if you guys are on Arch, you get um version 4.0.1 of the Linux kernel today. Or as of today. That was when I got um, the latest kernel and uh, my computer didn't blow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good thing when you're using Arch. <laughs> yeah, so I got uh, I, I got kernel 4.0.1, I think. And um, I, I guess we shouldn't be making like big a big a big deal about it because like Linus himself was just nah whatever. Uh, but what's cool about it is that it can update. Without having to restart, which is, Ooh. which is kind of a big thing. Because like, when you, when you do all of your software updates on Linux, right? Like, you don't need to restart. 
except if it's the kernel. So now you don't have to restart even if the kernel updates. And that's big for people in the server space, right? You don't want to have... I was going to say, it's big for the people in the International Space Station. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? Like, like you <laughs> Because don't rebooting have... means no oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> or rebooting means gravity. <laughs> so everybody on the ISS, run Linux. <laughs> But yeah, um, kidding aside. Uh, yeah, that, that's that, that's pretty much it, man. Like, I, I just wanted to say okay. that um, if you're on Arch and um, you're using GNOME three sixteen, I think I can't remember which GNOME version I'm using. Um, if you get the kernel four point zero point one, it's safe to update. Uh, well, at least given my setup. But you know, there we go. Uh, yeah, so next the, uh, bit of news. The big story. Um, uh, during. Whoa. Dude, like, like everybody's oh, been. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Get this right. Uh, you know how Microsoft has, or how these big companies have. I like, think I've heard of this news. Yes. Right? The developer conference. Yes. Build conference, Visual Studio Code, which is probably like a cheap knockoff of Sublime Text or something, is cross platform. Most likely. <laughs> And I'm like, so, how many spyware does this have? <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's 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 kind of it's, it's kind of crazy to think that uh, Microsoft is giving or is is um, putting Visual Studio Code, which is like a uh, a code editor, right? Not not a full IDE, but like a yeah, code editor yeah. thing. And it's not. Right? I don't. I don't think it's uh. What you see is what you get. Editor. Right? I mean, not not. What do you call those things? Uh, I'm using the wrong term. Visual, yeah, like not very visual, right? Yeah, it's 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 not an I, it's not a full IDE, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, it's the fact that it's studio, capable. Right? Yeah, it's it's yeah the it's, fact it's that it's capable, capable right? coding for. Um, I don't know though what's their agenda, or I don't know what their motivation is, why they uh, did that, and why they push for that. Well, releasing it's, releasing it for Linux. No, for everyone, it's open. Even for OS X, you can code, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I, I guess I, let's create yeah. competition. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's kind of they're kind of late to like the they're kind of late to the uh, code thingy. What's it called? I I I don't know what it's called exactly, but it's it's like a, a code editor or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, Kind of late to that game, um, yeah. But my my theory is that Microsoft just wants to be a software company, right? Oh, so they're transitioning away from hardware now. Yeah, like go go back to I their mean, then, like, core competency. Exactly, exactly. What they were strong ever since. That's why they, I think I, I read the release earlier, like a press release that they're targeting like ten billion, uh, not ten billion, like. Something a billion devices that runs Microsoft or something or that has Microsoft in it. Yeah, I think that's their aim for something. I'm like, eh, they can do that because I mean they pretty much did that already with Microsoft Office. Yeah, um, and especially during yeah. the '90s and the early aughts. So you know. Yeah, and well, there's the uh, there's that whole thing about how they also want to get into the cloud space. Um, like backend infrastructure stuff, which is kind of weird, but because because um because they're gonna have to work with Linux, pretty much. Like to to go for the strategy that I think they're going for, they really do need to play nice with Linux. Um, uh, they're not yeah. gonna wage war with Linux anyway. They're not an ongoing battle with Linux anyway. They're- if all, it's OS X. Well, there was a time though. There was a time when uh, what's his face, um, Gates? Bomber, Steve Bomber, uh, said something about open source being a cancer. So, like, there there was a time. But it, it's Bomber. <laughs> I mean, developers. Does anybody take him seriously? Even if he's pl- managing Los Angeles Clippers, nobody cares what he says. <laughs> uh, yeah. So go Spurs go. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Bulls man. Basketball jokes is like. Bulls, man. Bulls. Anyway, off tangent. 
But um, now over to next news. Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu 10.04 LTS reached its end of life. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that news? <laughs> I, I don't. I, I just found it really trippy. Like, wow, 10.04. That's like really old. <laughs> Yeah, um, 2010. I uh, was still a young guy in a uh, college. Then it means well, that fine. I was graduating. Yeah, <laughs> but then that means that uh, because it's end of life, that means it's April. Well, it was April, and 1504 was released. Ubuntu 1504 to not very uh, much, not very much fanfare. You know, there wasn't very much because but. exactly <laughs> no no fanfare because you know. Everyone is still like holding on to 1404, right? Well, I I guess. I mean, I'm on um. I'm on, is it a, is it a wait and see? Yeah, I, I'm on I'm on um, 1410. Um, I'm on Ubuntu 1410, but um, it's it, there wasn't very much fanfare, I guess, because um, the the focus hasn't been on the desktop in a while, right? Like it, it's been some time since the focus was on the desktop. But yeah, um, you, you know how they have this big plan for convergence coming in sixteen, right? Yeah, yeah. So now they're um, so for the next release cycle, no, not the next release cycle. For the next LTS, they're going to be focusing, like refocusing on the desktop. So sixteen oh four is where we'll see like the latest Unity, where we're going to see Mir, like. Finally, ship with uh, uh, yeah. Unity we talk Unity about this. Eight. Like, yeah. action is gonna be in 2016. Like, that's gonna be a busy year for us because <laughs> we are going to test a lot of things. It's gonna be a busy year for Ubuntu. Um, oh yeah. Well, what's noteworthy about 1504 is that it uses systemd and not upstart. Um, it's it's the I think it ships with systemd by default. But if you check the Ubuntu wiki. There's a way to get upstart back. Like, so, you know, because people, some people don't like systemd, right? Like, there was, because there options. Was thing. Yeah. Because open source and options. Yeah. So they, so they have like instructions on how to totally yank out systemd and replace it with good old upstart. Uh, speaking of systemd, Debian 8 has finally been released. My girl, Jesse. It's just Jesse, right? Yeah, Jesse. Okay, because if it's like my girl Jesse, <laughs> okay, they're very, huh? Uh, they're very uh, specific on the gender of, of this, this show. It really has to well, be a girl Jesse, okay? Jesse can be a guy's name. I'm not saying. Yeah, then, I'm not saying. I'm just saying, then, like. But then it's based off of Toy Story characters. Yeah. So you know, Jesse is the girl cowboy, cowgirl, whatever. I mean, who are we to judge? Movie? Everybody could be their own gen anyway. <laughs> I'm just laughing. <laughs> what about, uh, what about Jesse? It also ships with system D. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, it has this really cool thing, which I have like no idea how to, uh, really break down, but it's something like, it supports a 32-bit firmware on 64-bit systems, or on 64-bit, like, architecture, uh, which apparently for some devices was, like, the problem with getting Linux on said device. Something to oh. do with UEFI. I'm not exactly sure. I just skimmed through it. But, yeah. So, uh, Jesse has finally been released. Um, but, you know, We've pretty much been running Jesse like ever since, <laughs> like because because um because I, I think like a lot of people actually really do uh play around with testing and SID uh more than they do with stable, whereas stable is like really used for um actual production environments because because stable is like really old. <laughs> <laughs> Like really old. If you think about, if you think about the Linux landscape two years ago, like what was standard two years ago is pretty much what Debian seven was. And it didn't like update at all with the exception of security. So yeah. Uh, Debian nine is going to be called stretch the octopus. <laughs> 
<laughs> and there was a, I'll take it. There was um there was this thing on the Debian mailing list where the uh, one of the developers is like um we have at least 64 remaining characters from Toy Story. So we don't have to worry about running out of names. <laughs> And apparently Disney is coming up with a Toy Story 4. So, like, that would be more potential I mean, names. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, a bunch of characters. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. So that's Long a, may they live. <laughs> that's another potential, like, um, name. Pool, pool of names. Yeah, pool of names for the Debian project. Uh, you were talking about how 2016 is going to be interesting because of Mir shipping on Ubuntu. Um, Fedora 23, which is set to ship in fall of this year. So around October, November of 2015. Fedora 23 is set to be released. And it's going to run Wayland by default. So it's going to... <laughs> <laughs> and so the battle rages on. Well, I don't know. I, mean, I, I guess people have figured their shit out already. So like, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's noteworthy. Um, I guess like Fedora 23, fall 2015, Wayland by default. Mm, what else do we have? What else do we have? Uh, so yeah, last week, no, two weeks ago, four weeks ago, we mentioned that there are about a thousand games for, uh, Linux on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- when you think of it, in that sense, it doesn't seem like it's very much. Like, you, you could say that it isn't very much. But when you think about how Steam has about 5,000 games on it, uh, you can say that one in five games on Steam support Linux. It's still a bit of a low ratio. But that sounds so cool, but though. One in five games exactly. on Steam run Linux. Like, three out of five, fine. But, like... <laughs> and, um... Another one of the games, well, you know, it's, it's about, it's about a thousand one hundred. Um. Well, yeah, but either way, I'm happy that it's happening. And, I mean, Battle of West not still the best Linux game, native Linux game. Oh, yeah. But, you know. And it's pretty much the indie market. Yeah, although you're going to love this. Uh, the, the company Virtual Programming, so they were the guys that ported Witcher 2 and, uh, Bioshock. Uh, what was it? The Ooh. Bioshock 2 game or whatever? Uh, Bioshock Infinite. The guys that, that, um, the guys that did the Witcher 2 port and the Bioshock Infinite port are bringing Spec Ops the line to Linux. Oh. And it is currently, and it is currently in alpha. So. Oh. <laughs> so like, watch oh. this space. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no! I mean, pretty much if you if you've read Heart of Darkness, you don't or, or watch Apocalypse Now for Christ's sake, you don't need to play. <laughs> yeah, but like that, that's like your favorite game, right? Like it's uh, one day we're gonna do like a Linux game of the week, Spec Ops: The Line. But it's uh, or is it too yeah, late? Too late? I'm pretty much gonna say that it's not a good <laughs> let's play type of game. Like it's not it's not good for a third world let's play. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's really a single player experience. And it's hard to show that single player experience. But the fact that they're like they bought Witcher, which is already great. It's one of the thing games I have lined up. It's just that desktop burned down. Yeah. So I'm sorry. But like now that they're bringing in Spec Ops the line. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> say goodbye to our wallets. <laughs> um, and uh, last month, at la- last month, I was raving about the new version of Audacity. Uh, mm-hmm. it's also like finally on the Arch repo. Um, and I figured I'd throw you a bone. Dark Table 1.6.6 is out. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Dark Table 1.6 is out. And they have a new stuff up. And I think it has cloud? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Cloud or mobile? Ah, anyway, I'm probably screwing it up because I, I, I read it like just in passing. 
Okay. But yeah, those are the projects I closely follow. It's a project I clo- not not closely follow, but like I monitor from time to time because that's something I miss. I miss I miss using Darktable than um Lightroom. Uh, they do have Darktable for Mac though, right? Hmm. Like there, there's no, a Darktable. For I don't Mac? think so. Like I saw I, uh, so. I saw a DMG. Like I always thought that was like a Mac thing. I think there is a dark table that you can put for not for a ten point six point eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think the minimum is ten point eight. I am a ten point six. Mmm. Okay. So it's a new guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh that's all the news that I have. Huh. <laughs> Alright. Oh, uh No, I'm just it's not really new. I just play, updated my my Linux Lite to 2.4, 2.6, 2.6, I think. Mm. I just updated this morning. Mm. Uh, how yeah, how how is it? it. <laughs> I got nothing. How is it? I, uh, huh? How is it? No, it's it's. I like Linux Lite. So what else am I gonna say? <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I wish I had like you know. I wish I had more of a review for something, like um. Yeah, I, I mean, I want a review. I, I don't need to review it. You know me. If <laughs> if I like something, I use it. If not, then I probably won't. <laughs> like I'm not gonna waste my time. And I don't tinker. You know that. If it works right off the box, I just do some here and there. Mm. I'm good. Oh, uh, they updated their website. <laughs> oh, oh, um, it's a. Sneaker website, great for mobile viewing. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, um, I stand corrected, by the way. Uh, because, like, somebody might call me out on this. When I said that Debian stable is, the, the current Debian stable, so Debian 7 was what was pretty much, like, standard two years ago. Um, not quite, because Debian 8, Jesse, uh, ships with GNOME Shell 3.14. Which is kind of old. And either way, still working, right? Yeah, I don't know. I like 3.16. Am I on 3.16 or... Oh, I can't remember. I'm, 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 I'm totally going to check that out now. You probably should. <laughs> uh, 3.16 but 3.17. Uh... <laughs> uh... Find out how to get GNOME 3. Hmm. Uh, Fedora is on 3.14. OpenSUSE is on 3.14. Ubuntu GNOME is on 3.12. Huh. Interesting. Well, <laughs> Ubuntu GNOME 14.10 includes 3.12. Okay. Arch Linux package search. GNOME. <laughs> oh, that was retarded. That was retarded. Because like every, it's okay. every like no. If you could about. hear yourself right now through my headset, you sound like a robot that I could barely hear. <laughs> okay. In my head, it's like Star Wars, so I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah, Gnome three sixteen. Yeah, but to our listeners, you are very clean, and I, I can still listen to you properly. So you know, I can still hear you properly. So you know. But you sound like a robot. Eh, and it's okay. Eh, eh. And it's third world problems. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Third world problems. Like trying to upload, uh, like trying to upload the third world Linux stuff on YouTube. Yeah, it probably takes like a long time. Yep, these are like two gigabytes. Now files. with visualizations. <laughs> <laughs> yep, now with the visualization, with the uh, waveforms and stuff. So if you want to yeah. check them out, head over to youtube.com slash users <laughs> slash channel 14 TV. Yeah, uh, and subscribe to the channel because like the third world gaming guys, I, 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 Ironic and Zaxel are, you know, doing some let's plays of some cookie games and whatnot. Yeah. They have a lot of stuff li- lined up. So you might, subs- might want to check out and subscribe to that space. Yep. And, third uh, world for- guys. Yeah, for anything else, uh, visit channel14.com. That's channel, F-O-U-R-T-E-E-N dot com. But you probably already knew that. Uh, we're on Twitter, on Google Plus, 
Uh, you can contact us at contact at channel 14.com. That yep. goes to, that goes to everybody though. Like, that goes to everybody in, involved in channel 14. So, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you're cool with like ironic and Saxel seeing it, then, you know, contact at channel 14.com. Otherwise, you can just email draw at channel 14.com or ag at channel 14.com. Yeah. Sure. Or Linux at channel 14.com. Yeah, I, I, th- I think we have. <laughs> well, that. we have not- a lot of we have a lot of things linked to that email. So yeah, uh, best contact us contact channel fourteen dot com or um, twitter dot com slash third room linux twitter dot com slash channel ch fourteen. Yeah. Um, hmm. What else do we have to say to everybody? Cheers. Thanks for listening. See you in the off tangent. Cheers. So if you made it this far, this is the off-tangent section. And your robotic voice is getting worse and worse. Are is you it? saying bzzz or is it really <laughs> the machine? I, I can't decipher from that bzzz. I'm, I'm saying bzzz. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna be weird because our <laughs> listeners are gonna listen to it like... They're both clear. <laughs> Why are they visiting each other? I need not bees. Bees! <laughs> but, um... Yeah, my waveform just died. Uh, <laughs> bees! Yeah, I can't hear you properly. <laughs> Maybe if we wait. What? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Random noises. Buzz, 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 buzz. Bzzz. 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 We're sorry, listeners. Bzzz, 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 bzzz. It's actually really cool that we got through the main show without the internet connection. Dying on us. Seeing as this is the off tangent, it I'm, doesn't really it, matter. It's a good thing that yeah, I'm I'm sending you messages on the Google Plus just to see because I can't hear you. I can't hear you <laughs> properly. stopping recording.